In this video, we'll be discussing problem number three. This is from the 2021 AP Stats Free Response Set. And problem number three from 2021 dealt with probability. So if you read what we have access to here, it says to increase morale among employees, a company is going to start a program. One employee is going to randomly be selected each week to receive a gift card. Each of the company's 200 employees is equally likely to be selected each week, and the same employee can be selected more than once. Each week's selection is independent from every other week. So that last set of sentences, since you can be selected more than once, you don't have the number of people able to be selected reduced from 200 to 199 after the first week and then to 198 after the second week. So the fact that you can be selected more than once is, is what helps maintain independence in this particular situation. Part A says consider the probability that the particular employee receives at least one gift card in a 52-week year. Part 1 of Part A, define random variable of interest and state how the random variable is distributed. So when you define a random variable, we typically are going to use capital letters and stats, and as long as it's not used anywhere else in the problem, capital X is what's used most frequently. So I'm just going to let capital X be the number of gift cards received by an employee in the 52-week period. Now to decide how this random variable is distributed, if, if you're dealing with a probability distribution, there's not really many options. I'm gonna click over to the formula sheet here real fast. And what you should see in the center of the first page of the formula sheet is you should see a lot of the probability distributions. Now the normal distribution technically is a probability distribution, but there's not really anything here that would seem to indicate that we're in a situation that would involve the normal distribution. So Really, the two other major probability distributions that you would have learned of in AP Stats are the binomial distribution and the geometric distribution. Now, for each of these distributions to be able to be used, certain conditions need to be satisfied. Uh, if we click back to our work for the problem, both of these situations require there for there to be a binary outcome. Each week, you either receive a gift card or you don't receive a gift card right? You get one or you don't. One thing or the other thing. So we do have a binary outcome here. We need there to be independence. Well, they flat out tell us that there is independence in these drawings from week to week. You need the same probability of being selected each week or the same probability of success each week for each of the binomial and the geometric distributions. But what's going to make us side with the binomial distribution here rather than the geometric distribution, the number of trials is fixed at 52. Right? We're dealing with one 52-week year. So because the number of trials is fixed at 52, that's what's going to cause us to say that our random variable x is distributed binomially with the number of trials fixed at 52 and the probability of success each trial as 1 out of 200. What would have caused us to go to, with the geometric distribution is if the question was dealing with the number of trials until six. So if the, if the question was, what's the probability that your first gift card will be won after 52 weeks, or what's the probability your first gift card will be won after uh, 100 weeks, that would be measuring the trials until success. That would be a, a geometric situation rather than the binomial situation that we find ourselves in here. So part one of part A, binomial distribution with number of trials fixed at 52, probability of success of one over 200. Now part B actually asks, part two of part A, excuse me, actually asks us to determine the probability that a particular employee receives at least one gift card within a 52 week year. So what's the probability that X is greater than or equal to one, right? At least one would mean that our random variable is one or above. Now, I think the easier calculation to do here, rather than getting too caught up in the binomial computation itself, is to recognize that the complement of this, uh, the answer to this is really the complement of the probability of not winning a gift card, right? The probability of winning one or more is going to be one minus the probability of winning none. So that's the calculation that I structured right here across this top line. 
Uh, what's the probability of winning none? Well, since we maintain independence week to week, every week the probability of not winning is 199 over 200. Well, if I carry that out over 52 consecutive weeks by literally just multiplying the probabilities together, so or raising that fraction to the 52nd power, and then taking this difference on the calculator gives you a probability of 0.229. Alternatively, you could have uh, use the binomial calculation here from the formula sheet uh, or you could have used the calculator input for its binomial computation so if you were going to go with the calculator input and that's why I want to talk briefly about this bottom line the calculator probability calculations are only ever going to find areas of left hand tails we want to know the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. That would be a right-hand tail for that probability calculation. We would still have to do a use a complement, so the same initial thought has to happen, and that's the fact that winning at least one gift card, the probability of that happening is going to be the complement of winning no gift cards. So if I take 1 and then subtract off the, the binomial CDF calculation, with number of trials fixed at 52, probability of success at 1 over 200, and then I'm just trying to accumulate everything up to 0. That'll give me this answer of 0.229 as well. If you are going to go with the calculator input method, if you leave out the n, the p, and the value of x that should be capitalized, the value of x that you're dealing with, or you don't use an inequality over here in your probability statement, that is going to be a little bit of a flaw in your work, and they could dock you points if you didn't have that happening within your response. Now, Part B says to calculate and interpret the expected value for the number of gift cards a particular employee will receive in a 52-week year. Show your work. So I have the same section of the formula sheet that we were glancing at a little bit earlier in this discussion, copy and paste it into my screen right now. And we know we're dealing with the binomial distribution and expected value of a probability distribution is simply the mean of the probability distribution. So I'm going to use this calculation to figure out the mean of my random variable X. So I'm going to take the number of trials 52 multiplied by the probability of success, 1 over 200, and I end up with 0.26. Now, you are asked to interpret this. So we've calculated it already. We've shown our work for the calculation. We are asked to interpret the meaning of this 0.26. Now, an expected value is always a long-run average. Right? It's, it's not necessarily the average for one year, but if this process were repeated over many years, right? If this process were repeated indefinitely during any 52 week period, you would expect on average employees to have earned 0.26 gift cards. So when you interpret an average value, excuse me, an expected value, it's significant to show that you know that this is a long run calculation, not just what happens for any individual employee that year, but a long run calculation. So if the process was carried out over many years, and then just denoting that you know that it's the average or the expected outcome over the course of those thousands and thousands and thousands of trials. Last part here says that Agatha is an employee at the company. She never gets a gift card for an entire 52 week year. Based on her experience, does she have a strong argument that the selection process was not truly random. Explain your answer. Well, think back to what we did in part A, that the probability of an employee receiving at least one gift card in a 52-week period is 0.229. It is far more likely that someone does not receive a gift card, right? The complement of that would be 1 minus 0.229. So there's you know a 77% chance that someone does not receive a gift card, theoretically, and only a 23% chance that they do receive one within a 52 weeks period. Because 0.229 is much closer to zero than it is to one, not receiving a gift card is actually a much more likely outcome than receiving at least one gift card is. So we've definitely referenced back to what we've done in part A. We're using context here providing a strong explanation, and those are all things you would want to thrive for within your own response to a similar question.